And now the story of a Lebanese woman with a surprising take on the crisis. Brigitte Gabriel was born in Lebanon, now an American citizen. She is an author and activist who is harshly critical of Islamic fundamentalism. Gabriel is the author of the soon-to-be-published book, Because They Hate, a survivor of Islamic terror warns America. She joins us from Washington right now. Uh, good to have you with us, uh, Ms. Gabriel. Thank you, Miles. I'm delighted to be with you. You, you wrote a... Um, it's, it's posted on your website. It's Americans, AmericanCongressForTruth.org. Uh, you wrote a message to Israel. I want to share some of this with people so they can get an idea of what you're talking about here. You say this, Thank you, Israel. We urge you to hit them hard, referring, of course, to Hezbollah, and destroy their terror infrastructure. It is not only Israel who is fed up with this situation, but the majority of silent Lebanese in Lebanon who are fed up with Hezbollah and are powerless to do anything out of fear of terror retaliation. Uh, when you write that, you write that with some degree uh, of risk to yourself personally, don't you? Absolutely. I receive death threats, but this is the time when people need to muster courage to stand up in the face of evil and a hate ideology that now is not only affecting Lebanon and Israel, but this cancer of hatred has spread throughout the world. Even the New York Times last month was talking about cells of Hezbollah in New York City ready to unleash suicide bombings in America. This has to stop. Now, what kind of reaction do you hear, though? Do people call you a traitor to your country? Well, the radical Islamists call me a traitor to my country, but my countrymen and women who are scattered all around the world do not call me a traitor. After all, we, the Christians and the moderate Muslims in Lebanon, had created Paris of the Middle East, the banking capital of the Middle East. It was only when radical Islamists started growing up and spewing hate ideology and fighting the Christians and wanting to declare war against Israel that now uh, we are fighting the war that we are fighting. And I'm speaking from a experience miles my home was bombed when I was 10 years old living in Lebanon it was bombed by the radical Islamists uh, shelling Katyusha rockets at my home in South Lebanon trying to create a base from which to fight Israel I ended up wounded ended up in the hospital for two and a half months and then lived in a bomb shelter for seven years of my life between the age of 10 and 17 with very little electricity very little water or actually no electricity and very little food and it was because the radical Islamists were growing and trying to take over our area the Christian area in South Lebanon to declare war on Israel we the Christians held we worked with the Israelis we wanted to have peace with the Israelis but the radicals insisted on killing the Christians and fighting Israel Well, let me ask you this though there, there is a component to Hezbollah uh, the non-armed component of it. That is the, the civilian political aspect of it. And they, they won fair and square in open elections, a couple of dozen seats to parliament. Is there something about Hezbollah that can be salvaged in some way? They do, in fact, sort of have a de facto government there in southern Le Lebanon. Sadly, Miles, uh, Hezbollah does not want peace with Israel, nor peace with America, nor peace with Western civilization. Hezbollah is a radical, hate-filled organization bent on destroying the West. We basically have terrorists who were elected to the cabinet in Lebanon by the majority terrorists that they have bred themselves. In 25 years, when Hezbollah has not been stopped because of their radical practice, the extreme elements of Islam, they have multiple marriages, they have a lot of children and in a matter of 25 years they have multiplied to produce enough people to vote themselves into the government well let me ask you this what can the, the, the fairly and freely elected government of Beirut do about this and why isn't it doing more at this point, the government of Beirut is really helpless. They cannot do anything. The president is a, power, uh, is a puppet of Syria. Uh, Syria and Iran are working together uh, against Israel, against the West. It was Syria and Iran that stopped the Lebanese a newly elected government in 1983 who wanted to negotiate a peace treaty with Israel uh, under the president-elect Bashir Jamayel. Uh, president Bashir Jamayel was assassinated. The peace negotiations with Israel stopped. And right now, those two countries are completely manipulating Lebanon and controlling Lebanon and the Lebanese government is completely helpless and useless and unless the world powers get involved and help the theater revolution which started last year or a year and a half well, ago let's, and let's, enforce let's, resolution 1559 nothing is going to get done well, and, and specifically what should the US be doing should the Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice be in the region should she be there sooner should she be traveling and dealing directly with Damascus to try to come up with a solution here. 
We, as a government, need to put pressure on Syria. We need to put pressure on Iran, but especially Syria, because it is through Syria where all the missiles and all the weapons are being smuggled into Hezbollah. Syria is the protector of Hezbollah. We need to pressure Syria and give Syria an ultimatum. We also need to support Israel and not stop Israel in basically decapitating Hezbollah in Lebanon, a cleaning house in Lebanon, so that the Lebanese democracy will have a chance into budding and becoming a peaceful nation again and having peace with their neighbors. Brigitte Gabriel, founder of American Congress for Truth.org, who says thank you, Israel. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.